so my name is Cynthia Ozaji, C Y N T H I A O Z O J I. This is my Seneca ID card. Ooh, Sprite. Okay. All right. This is my environment. Here is my client. I have his permission to film this video. Show your script, please. Front and back. Okay. Everywhere. The rest of my environment. Okay. I will verbalize once I start my timer. Let me plug this phone in so it can charge. Okay. Okay. I'll verbalize once I start the timer. For the purpose of this video, your name is John, okay? Okay. I'm starting my timer. Hello, John. My name is Cynthia. I'll be your nurse for today. Is it okay if I call you, John? Yes, please. Can I see your armband, please? What brings you to the hospital today? I'm sick. I'm sorry to hear that. So, I'll be performing a series of head to toe assessments, taking your vitals. After which, I'll call the doctor to tell him my findings. Do I have your permission? Usually, this takes seven minutes. Do I have a consent to proceed? Yes. Also, is there anyone you feel comfortable sharing this information with? My mother. Okay. From the set of vitals given to me for this scenario, my client's temperature is abnormal, his heart rate is abnormal, his respiratory rate is abnormal, however, his blood pressure is normal. So, John, do you have a headache? Yes, and my neck is really stiff. Okay, do you feel pain when breathing? No, but my chest hurts a little. Do you feel dizzy? Yes, I have dizziness and it's making me nauseous. Do you have cough? Yes, I have cough, but it's not that bad. Okay, um, do you, are you experiencing shortness of breath? No. Do you have any head injury? No. Are you experiencing tremors? No. Do you have difficulty speaking or swallowing? No. Okay, you mentioned you have a headache. Can you, do you mind telling me when it started? Yesterday, but it was today. Can you describe this pain? Trumbling. Trumbling? Yes. Okay, on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 being the highest, how severe is your pain? 8. Um, does this headache radiate? Does it spread? No. Um, where exactly do you feel this headache? All over my head. How often do you feel this headache? All the time. What makes it better? Falling asleep. What makes it worse? Movement and light. Did you try any intervention? Did you take anything for the headache? Yes, I took Palinona and Abbe, but it did not work. Do you know what caused the headache? I do not know, I just feel sick. Okay, um, John, um, you, I can, you can also try some therapeutic measures such as meditation or heat and ice um, pack. Um, to help you with the pain, okay? Even though you're taking other medication. John, are you allergic to anything? Yes, yes, penicillin. Okay, are you taking any medication? Yes, insulin. Okay, all right, John, I want to inspect your movement. Uh, take a few steps for me, please. Oh, you're shaking, sit down, sit down. Do you mind um, moving your neck from side to side for me? Does it hurt? Yes. Okay, from inspection, I can see that my client has an unstable gait, stiffness of the neck, obvious um, general body weakness, as also verbalized by him, although there is no sign of respiratory distress, no abnormal behavior. Also, I can see that there is no sign of cyanosis of the lips. Um, my client is a lot oriented to person, time, and place. Um, there is no, the work of breathing is non-labored. He's not using his accessory muscles to breathe and he obviously has general body weakness. Okay, um, John, I will be, I can also see that his eyes, he opens his eyes spontaneously and he's, um, he obeys command. And like I said before, he's a lot of person, time and place. Do you mind giving me your hands? Grip my hands for me. Okay, push against my hands. All right, your leg strength. Okay, I'll be assessing your eyes. I'm putting a pen light. Please follow my instruction, look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Look at my arm, my, my finger. Okay, look far ahead. Okay, from my glasscoma scale assessment, my patient's pupils are round, but they're not equal, and they're reactive to light and accommodation. He has strong arm strength and strong leg strength. So I'll go ahead and perform auscultation of his lungs. John, do you mind facing the camera? And take a deep breath for me anytime you feel my stethoscope against your chest, okay? Okay. Deep breath, please. Okay, turn around. Deep breath, please. Okay. From auscultation, I can hear whizzing sounds at the base of my client's lungs as opposed to the regular lung sounds, which are 
um, soft blowing rustling sounds. I'll go ahead and call the doctor to tell him my findings. Ring ring. Hello, doctor. This is Cynthia calling from the ER. I'm calling with regards to my patient, John, a 17 year old male. Um, he came in with headache, um, dizziness. He says he's, um, he's dizzy and he feels nauseous. Um, he has general body weakness, stiffness of the neck. Um, a little history and background on my patient. He has type 1 diabetes. He's been in and out of the hospital. He's allergic to penicillin. And um, uh, upon assessment, I understand that I see that my client's gait is unstable. He's, um, his gait is unstable. He has um, neck stiffness of the neck. His vital signs shows that his temperature is 103.5 103 degree Fahrenheit. 22 breaths per his um, respiration rate is 22 breaths per minute. His heart rate is 115 beats per minute, and his blood pressure is 115 over 70. I provided um, heat pack for comfort measures. Uh, I would recommend for that assessment. So in this scenario, I deduce that I'm suspecting that my client is um, experiencing infection and um, DKA. I would two interventions I'll be providing. One is continuous um, um, patient monitoring and assessment to make sure that his respiratory level, his vital signs, and his blood glucose level are within normal range. So I'll continue monitoring that. The second intervention would be patient teaching. Since he's been in and out of the hospital, I want to make sure that he understands how to manage his type 1 diabetes and continuously check his blood glucose level and perform regular heart hygiene to prevent infection. Then I would also, um, um, or for two others I'll be expecting from the doctor would be IV insulin to manage his hyperglycemia and the second order would be IV insulin pump to manage his potassium levels because when we administer IV insulin it usually pushes the potassium levels from the extracellular space to the intracellular space and this can cause cardiac arrhythmias. I would also be measuring, uh, monitoring his cardiac assessment so in order to prevent that we'll be, mon we'll be giving him, I'll be expecting the doctor to order IV potassium pump. All right, thank you so much.